Hello and welcome. Last week we started with the third sacrament of confession. Today we will take you through the rite of practicing the sacrament. One of the most important individual roles of a priest is the confession session with his congregation, through which he can get into contact with each individual privately. So what should we do before confession? The first thing is to make an appointment with your confession father. This will give you enough time to prepare yourself beforehand by sitting alone and remembering all the sins you committed with and without intention. You make a note of them with all honesty, remembering what St. Anthony said. If we remember our sins, God will forget them. And if we forget our sins, God will remind us of them. You can write your sins on a piece of paper, keep keeping them somewhere where no one can see them, as well as any questions you may have to ask your confession father. Therefore, having made a note of all the sins you have committed since your last confession, you repent before God for these sins, as we explained to you previously. For those who are new or beginners in the life of repentance, the best period for confession is fortnightly, then gradually every month. It is very dangerous for the believers, especially youth and beginners, to be ne neglectful in their confessions and the daily period between confessions. For this neglect leads to spiritual lukewarmness and you can forget certain sins intended to be confessed. And the greatest danger is a person who often receives Holy Communion without regular confession. The confessing person must care for three important things while preparing for confession. The first thing is sins and mistakes committed. The second, thoughts and feelings encountered which need counseling from the confession father in order to distinguish the good from the bad. And the third thing is any questions regarding the spiritual life which need guidance or discussion with the Confession Father. Self-examination must be honest and as we mentioned before without condemning others. For in confession we should blame ourselves only not other people or circumstances. So what happens during confession? Confession should take place in a quiet corner in the church facing the altar so that we feel empowered and sanctified. Confession, being a sacrament, should always take place in church. However, if the priest comes across a person who has not been regular in church or in church life, but wishes to repent, the priest may visit him at home and accept the confession there, and at the same time encourage them to come to church. In addition, the sacrament of confession may take place at home if someone is sick before they receive the Holy Communion. The priest usually wears a cloak or cape whilst accepting confession, as he is taking part in a holy sacrament that needs physical and spiritual preparation. When the priest starts the confession session, take your turn and wait. While waiting, keep yourself busy with some spiritual readings so that you may keep your mind free of any evil thoughts or the temptation of the devil who at that particular moment will try his utmost to prevent you from confessing and hence consequently prevent you from receiving the Holy Communion. Read the prayer before confession from the Agbeya prayer book. When it is your turn, approach in reverence, kissing the cross and the priest's hand. Confess your sins and do not hide anything, regardless of how embarrassing the sins may be. Remember the Apostle's words, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Confess all your sins as the prophet says, pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. The prophet used the metaphor of water specifically because water, unlike oil and vinegar, never leaves any stains or marks in the cup after it is poured out. 
Likewise, when your confession is complete and honest, it will never leave any stains inside your heart. You should know that you are confessing before God and not before a human being because the Holy Spirit is present at that moment to listen and to grant forgiveness. Remember, the priest is like a spiritual doctor who will help cure you of your sins and weaknesses by giving you advice to your problems. It's the same way that a patient never hides any illnesses from uh, his doctor, so that the doctor can give the appropriate medication. We mu must be even more honest with our priest in describing our spiritual illnesses, so that he can help us in our spiritual life and growth. Now after you finished and poured out all that you have as sins, it is time to listen carefully for the advice. The priest will give you and of any penance you have to do after you finish the confessions. After the priest has finished what he had to say, the person confessing then bows down his or her head or even kneel down to accept the absolution. The priest puts the cross over his head and prays the absolution. Usually there are three absolutions. Two of them prayed secretly and the third one is prayed out loud. In the first absolution, the priest asks for God's help, support and grace be upon you in order to give you the strength and power to crush Satan and his wicked tricks under your feet quickly. In the second absolution, he asks God to grant you his divine grace and peace which you lost because of your sins. He also asks God to return you once more to his fear so that you will choose the way of holiness which is Christ rather than the way of destruction which is with the evil one. And the third absolution, he asks for many gifts and blessings for you, like that God may grant you his rich mercy, that God may cut all the bondages of sins so that Christ might free you, he asks for the absolution and forgiveness of all the sins you have committed. And finally, he asks that your journey in the world be towards God and not towards the world and its lusts. After Abuna finishes, he will make the sign of the cross three times on your forehead and will breathe lightly in your face. After bowing, kiss the cross and the priest's hand. Now you will feel the heavy burden that was on your shoulders lifted up from you, feeling the greatness of the gift of forgiveness. Depart from this divine meeting amidst the praising of the heavenly hosts and the rejoicing of the saints. There are some prayers mentioned in the book of the Agbeya that might be helpful for the confessing person. You may use them before and after the confession. Go to your house in peace, thanking the Lord for his numerous graces and mercies bestowed on you. Finally, repentance and confession are not a trial or a court. It is shelter for sinners as a hospital. The one who confesses is not judged or condemned. He is surrounded by love, comfort, sincere interest. He is taken care of, healed, assisted, treated by the physician, instructed and forgiven. May our dear Lord forgive all our sins and faults. So, now let's take uh, a few questions. What exactly is repentance in our Coptic Orthodox understanding? Repentance means to feel regret over an action or intention as to change one's mind. Webster's New World Dictionary. St. Paul said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Also, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And he also wrote to the Romans saying, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. This change in one's mind must be accompanied by the change in one's action. St. Paul says about this, Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man, with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. 
Repentance is a second baptism. St. Athanasius the Apostolic says, As a baptized person is enlightened with the grace of the Holy Spirit, so also he who confesses his sins through the priest receives remission of sins through the grace of Christ. The Bible mentions about the sin that will never be forgiven. What is this sin? There is no sin without forgiveness except the one without repentance. Our Lord said, Therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven men. The Holy Spirit convicts us of sin if we refuse the work of the Spirit within us. We will not repent, and this is considered blasphemy against the Spirit, and consequently it is not forgiven. So blasphemy against the Spirit means refusing repentance, and of course the end result is death. Why do we have to confess to a priest? Why not bury one's head in a handkerchief and tell God that one is sorry? First of all, confessing to a priest doesn't mean that you cannot bury your head in your handkerchief and tell God that you're sorry. Second, if this method of being sorry is not effective when you are caught by a traffic policeman, why then should it be effective with God? Since sin is a result of pride, as Proverbs says, pride goes before destruction and the haughty spirit before a fall. It requires humiliation and mortification of the ego, which is available when one exposes one's faults to a fellow man. Finally, confessing to a priest gives you an opportunity to receive guidance and to hear advice, which helps you to resist sin and grow spiritually. Why confess to a priest? Maybe he is not as holy as the confessor. <laughs> that uh, indeed could be, but though he is not holier in his person, he is holier in his power because our Lord gave this power to the church. Only the church claims it and only the church exercises it. The mayor of a town may not be as a good person as some of the citizens, but he, is, he has the power that citizens do not have. So it is with the priest who is an instrument of the Lord. Nevertheless, a confessor should be wise in selecting the father of confession. How can a human being forgive sins? Isn't forgiveness for God alone? There are three types of forgiveness. One, God's forgiveness. Two, people's forgiveness. And three, the priest's forgiveness. God's forgiveness means that He is the judge of all the earth and our Creator, and so He, has, he is the only one that can forgive sins. People's forgiveness means their acceptance of other people's apologies and confessions, reconciling with them and not holding any grudges. As we pray on a daily basis saying, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Here the first two types of forgiveness are combined, the God and the peoples. The priest's forgiveness is basically the declaration through the Holy Spirit of God's forgiveness. Our dear Lord Jesus Christ passed his blessings of the Holy Spirit to his disciples by breathing into their faces saying, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven and if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Man cannot forgive sins, but God can forgive sins through man, as St. Paul explains. All things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. If I don't have time to confess before the liturgy, can I confess during the Holy Liturgy? Some people have this notion of confessing during the liturgy's readings, but this, however, is an inappropriate because of the shortness of time, especially if the priest is serving alone. In addition, this does not give enough chance for you to confess all your sins, nor give the priest enough time to give you the appropriate spiritual practices or advices. What is more dangerous is that 
Some people do not confess at all, but still proceed to the Holy Communion asking only the priest to give them the absolution. With great sorrow, some priests approve of giving the absolution without asking these people whether they have confessed or not. These people are adding to their sins, which will lead to the horrible judgment. Now I wonder, what is the use of the absolution without confession? Is it a magical prescription to forgive unconfessed sins? Also, there is another strange attitude amongst members of our churches, and that is, people who have already confessed come early to the church and still ask for absolution. Why? I hope that the priest might correct this common mistake. And also note, my beloved, that if you go to church after the Gospel reading, you cannot have Holy Communion as is taught by the church rites. And also, if you come between the readings of the Matins Absolution and the Absolution of Servants and the reading of the Gospel, do not ask for an individual absolution for the following reasons. One, you have already confessed and are ready because the priest has previously prayed the absolution for you. Two, the priest shall pray the general absolution for everyone after the fraction prayers. So because you will not be present and you will offer true repentance with the whole church, you are not in need for an individual absolution. This concludes our episode for the rites of confession and we will start the sacrament of Holy Communion in our next episode. See you then and God bless you.